Good afternoon. Um, I guess just from an injury standpoint, Cor Corliss uh, has a doctor's appointment tomorrow. Uh, hopefully he'll be cleared. He practiced all week. Uh, he just can't go contact at this point. So expect him, I think, uh, to regain back this week. If not, uh, for sure the week after that, they feel he'll be back out there. Um, we uh, kept out, obviously, uh, Trey Flowers. No injury there. Just we're not going to scrimmage him uh, during the course of the spring. Brought back D. Arthur Cowan. Obviously, uh, some positives there. Uh, that wasn't medically related. That was just academic related. And um, he earns his way back on the field each week. We meet Monday uh, with a group of people that tells us where he's at. And if he's moving forward, we'll let him practice on, on Thursday and Saturday. Um, uh, nothing really happened out there at the scrimmage. I think Tevin got a little banged up, but he came back in there. Tevin Mitchell, oh, Tevin beat him. Uh, he did get a concussion on Thursday, uh, which is a shame. He, he's really been playing well, um, so he's a uh, he's going to be out for a little bit. Not nothing severe, we don't think, but uh, hopefully we'll get him back uh, this early part of this next week or the week after. Um, but he'd had a really nice couple practices, um, so excited to see him. Um, with that, I think that's all the injury stuff. Uh, as far as the, the scrimmage itself, you know, we wanted to build off last week. We put in red zone goal line this week during the course of the week and started off uh, with a scripted scrimmage. The first half, we wanted to get 22 plays out there offense on off, uh, 22 of the ones, 22 of the twos. I thought there's a little bit of give and take uh, on both sides of the ball. I do like the way that uh, our guys compete or continue to compete. Um, some guys show up um, in, the, in critical downs there, which is very, very nice to see on both offensive and defense. Um, had some turnovers in the red zone offensively. We can't have that we can't uh, we can't give away points like that on the flip side uh, did a good job by the defense creating him and then as we moved into the second half of the scrimmage when we went to move the ball really trying to teach our guys you know field position um, how many yards they gain on first down once they get a, a first down to convert it um, third and short second and medium all that stuff showed up and I thought those are a lot of positives so I'm, I'm happy where we're at this is obviously uh, week three we got week four and five in front of us so we'll change it up a little bit more this week uh, getting some opponent specific uh, uh, preparation in for the early early games next fall, and then we'll jump into uh, more of a, um, what we did the first two weeks uh, the last week. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, not, not to make light of that. Yeah, I think B.A. is our number one quarterback. That kind of separated itself uh, from the time we had our last game to our first two weeks of practice. We just really felt B.A. Uh, has to, he has to compete against the rest of the SEC. You know, there isn't anybody uh, in our program right now that it's at his level. So really trying to stress him and, and make him understand that. And, and um, we got to have to get him to be uncomfortable. I want to I wanna really try to uh, press him on. With that being said, uh, Jim really thought that if, if we could get Austin and, and uh, Rafe PB a lot of reps, they could make a huge jump in the next three weeks and um, you know that that prompted the conversation I had with AJ Derby um, I had a meeting back in January with him and said you know if he ever wants to do something else uh, either tight end or linebacker I'd be I'd love to talk to him I'd love to give him an opportunity on some special team stuff and he didn't want to hear it and, and um, uh, I'll give a lot of credit I brought him in on Monday and I said hey here's where we're at why don't you try it just give me two weeks try tight end for two weeks and, and see where it goes and he came out Tuesday and was incredible. Um, Thursday was much of the same. Um, today when he dropped that pass, that was really the first, I think it's the first drop he's had since he, in, in, in team situations. I mean, he's just been catching everything, so um, hopefully there's something he had to go through there on that specific play. Uh, with that being said, I thought Rafe and Austin, um, you know, probably even Rafe a little bit more, really made some made some huge strides this week. The kid's definitely got a live arm. He's understanding our offense better. Um, obviously, Duwop, Duwop's kind of been going back and forth to say that he uh, has embraced a, a position change would, would, would probably not be correct. Um, I think he uh, he's very adamant about playing quarterback. We'd let him stay there. I told him he could stay at quarterback if he wanted to. Uh, but again, I encourage him to you know maybe try wide wide receiver for two weeks and see where it goes. So he played it uh, on Tuesday. Thursday he went back to a little bit of quarterback. Today he went to wide receiver. Looks exceptional with the ball in his hands. You know um, on that rock screen uh, he can catch catch a punt too. So really just trying to continue to grow his uh, uh, options and, and see what he wants to do. Uh, I've never been a guy that has made anybody move. Um, forced it if they want to do it they can if they don't want to they don't have to um, we'll, we'll, I always say this you know to a case in point we'll do up you know we're not moving you to fail we're, we're moving you to have success and and um, uh, with the success that AJ's had and we tried to give him some examples of our past playing coaching career hopefully that light bulb will come on soon yeah
you know, we quite honestly, you know, we've been trying to, you know, stuff him into that fullback spot, and and he, he's been very impressive in practice with some, some, he, he, you know, he's, I wouldn't say he's a burner, but he's de- he's got big speed or he's got great speed for a big back, and he's very powerful when he runs. You saw that today. I, I couldn't be more pleased with him. And to be quite honest, Denzel Evans showed some things today that I thought were very impressive. Um, we wanted to get Jay Will some more reps, and and Alex continued to get some. I, I give credit to Alex. He'd been a little bit uh, banged up. Uh, he had an ankle a little sore, and he persevered through it. So it was nice to see him get through that. Oh, at, at, at the center? Yeah. You know, um, we, we dabbled around a little bit with Mitch last week at center, and this week we kind of moved him there full time and let him and Luke battle it out. Obviously, whenever you're switching uh, centers with a, with a well, number one quarterback, you're going to have some centers happen. So I don't get, I mean, I'm not happy with it, but there's going to be some issues just because they keep going back and forth. But uh, they both have uh, some strengths. They both have some weaknesses, and we'll, we'll see where we're at after week two, two more weeks. Guard. Yeah, I, I uh, um, uh, called Grady this morning and I, I worked out a little deal with him that I wasn't going to let him run with the ones just because I was a little disappointed in some of the decisions uh, that he was making and, and he's responded very, very well, had a couple great weeks of practice and, and has been really good uh, off the field. So we, we basically called him this morning and said, if I had, unless you run with the ones, am I going to see good Grady or bad Grady? And he said, you're going to see good Grady, coach. And, and I think he played fairly well today. He's a very talented player. Uh, he's got the world by the, uh, in his hands, and, and um, hopefully he's going to continue to grow. Cordell, I think he can do He's got to be a utility guy. He hasn't grown into that. Just I can grab this spot and hang on to it. A little bit of center, a little bit of guard uh, at both right and left. <coughs> You know, I think if you if you if you were playing a game tomorrow, Austin would have the edge just because he's he said it, he's talked it, he's you know he's he's been in the huddle a little bit more. Doesn't obviously have a lot of uh, experiences, but uh, Rafe is uh, Rafe Rafe's a, you know a football junkie. He's uh, he's a kid that learns very well. He can throw the football. You can see that, and and um, uh, I would say that that's. Uh, kind of a day by day thing. Uh, 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 like I said, Austin really just has a edge because of of time spent here. What did you think of some defensive guys? Like I think Whew. Hugh Coleman had a couple of picks. Yeah. Pick and um, maybe the linebackers. You know, we moved TQ to Will linebacker, um, and he was playing Will, and then he's still playing a little bit in in in, in safety in certain situations. But uh, I couldn't be happier. We, we've I've known this since we since we recruited him. TQ loves contact. He's a pl- he's a playmaker type guy. Uh, I kept even trying to encourage our guys last year to put him in a position to 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 you know even in some sub packages. So I give a lot of credit. He's been very and you know I jumped his tail because he threw the ball in the air, but he made a great break, great read. Uh, he's 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 done a nice job, and I, I think that's going to. Another guy that jumped out to me was 47 Spate. Uh, you know, made some plays uh, really down on the goal line, red zone area, and then also out in the field. He, he's very quick, athletic. Uh, yeah, I, I really there's a great example of you had that kid uh, for a red shirt year, and you could have him for for a little bit of time. He's really making some huge strides right now. Yeah, Carroll's done a nice job. Um, you know, I think Carroll uh, loves to compete. He, he uh, again, case in point, where we brought him in as a junior college kid a year ago. It took him a while to learn how we want things done, and and uh, he's finally getting it. But um, I, I couldn't be if there's a unit on our field that's the most improved. It's definitely the corners between 23, Tevin Mitchell, between Carroll Washington, 21, and, and Will Hines. Uh, DJ Dean continues to do some good things. Jared Collins at 29. I mean, where we were struggling a year ago, you know, and I know we're not playing the SEC schedule right now, but you really feel good about those five guys competing. Start with the edges of the skipper. How do you think the, the edge guys are going to the game? You know, uh, Skip's uh, gotten better and better each day. The one thing I like about him is he's uh, – it's, it's not – it couldn't be any more important to him uh, than, than uh, the daily grind of, of film and uh, what you do away from the game and all that stuff. So he, he's gotten better. I think we need to continue to work on his punch and pass. That's probably his biggest biggest thing in the run game. There was a lot of things that were there today, but uh, we got a strain, I think, to compete the edges. Uh, Bray Cook is playing as good a football as I've seen him play. I, I'm very impressed with Bray. He's, he's by far their leader. We, we uh, elected our Hawk Council. Um, uh, last night, and I announced it today, and it's two players at every position, and, and uh, you know, Bray's a guy that is going to lead that O-line group, and, and I think a great example. Yeah, I, I uh, do one more. Are you going to ask something else? I'm sorry, no. Yeah, I, I uh, um, it's something I've done in the past with guys that 
when we're in those type of situations. And, and so what he does is he comes in and gets a, an early workout with Herbs that's kind of more um, uh, generated towards him just keeping the developments. You know, uh, the, the more muscle he can add to his frame, the better off he's going to be. Um, you know, in the fall, we'll, we'll scrimmage him, you know. But here in the spring, well, I just decided to keep him out of all, all live situations. And, and uh, it's worked well in the past, and I expect it will here too. Yeah, he was out there today. Is that what you mean? Um, he was out there on the sidelines. I, I, I mean, yeah, he's uh, – Kelvin's actually graduating this semester, so he'll be able to go somewhere and have two years of eligibility. We're helping him helping him through that right now. Um, so, yeah, he's not technically with, with us on the field, but he's in school. What pressure you guys are getting? Are you getting kind of pressure? You getting well, and we're really thin at D-line, so I was impressed we kept, that the way those twos kept responding there at the end. Um, uh, you know, a guy that's really done a nice job for us, B. Lou, um, uh, I, I'm, I'm excited for there's uh, Jermichael's continued to move forward. You know, I think the the biggest thing uh, Dietrich has, has gained the level of maturity. I think um, and continued to uh, move forward. So I, I, I like the way those guys are moving, um, but it's definitely an area that I can't wait to get some of our freshmen in there just to get more bodies for them. What have you You know, I, I, the three things that are going to jump out right away is I know he he and I share an idea in simplicity. You want to make sure that it um, is something that our players can understand and comprehend in a short amount of time and be able to execute. And I think that is very much true. I think our players know what they're doing. They're able to play faster. They're able to play more physical. I think the the second thing is is that he he just he he's on them constantly. Uh, and all the coaches, I, I think he's doing a nice job of coaching the coaches to get the details of what we want. You know, there's a, there's a, if you if you can't let the receiver across your face. And you can't let them across your face. It's just, it's not allowable. It's not acceptable. And um, being being very demanding on that point. And the third thing, uh, he he does a tackle circuit and a strip circuit every day in practice. And and you know I think we're just tackling a lot better. There's some guys making some nice plays out there today, but there's some really nice individual one-on-one -on -one tackles, which gets you excited. You know it was awesome. Dave came in on uh, came in on Wednesday. Um, uh, he really just had an open key to the program and, and uh, sat in our meetings, uh, staff meetings, offense, defense, uh, positional meetings, practices. Uh, we met early on that first day, and I gave him about a half a dozen things I'd really like to have some information and feedback on, and, and uh, uh, anything that was welcomed. And he gave me that uh, and more uh, very encouraging things, but also some critical things you need to hear. Um, uh, but here's a guy that's won on every level. Uh, you know, high, uh, uh, national championship as an assistant coach is at Pitt as a coordinator at Miami as a uh, you know defensive coordinator in the NFL the Super Bowl and I mean it's just he gave a great message to our guys this morning I, I don't allow a lot of people to come in and talk to our team just because I, I want to be able to understand the message and it was very clear to me after day two that he'd do a good job and he, he knocked it out of the ballpark this morning so uh, it's been awesome. Well, this week will it'll be a little bit different. I think th after three weeks, you need a little bit of a change of pace. So we'll really go ahead hard into Auburn and Texas Tech prep um, and 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 uh, work on some of those early non-season uh, non-conference opponents. Um, but on top of that, I think the um, uh, biggest thing for us is just keep keep getting better at the things we don't do well. You know, today I, I love Keon Hatcher. I thought he has done a great job since uh, we broke down in fall camp. But one of the issues we've had with him and overall is ball security. We can't start a scrimmage with with a with a loose ball, and and uh, it's something we have to learn. It's just it's unacceptable. It is not tolerated and has no place in our program. You know the thing about Brooks is he's uh, he's very athletic. He's kind of sneaky, and in, in a way that he just um, can can it, functionally he reads things very very well. So like the, that that pass was a deflected ball. Um, he, he does a nice job of uh, even last fall when he got in there and made some plays. You could see he has a good feel for the game. So the Mike linebacker, I don't know if it's his, his natural natural position. I think he might be more suited for the outside. But for us right now, he's doing the best job, and, and excited to see him grow. Yeah, no, that was my call. I just said, we would, when I sat down with him, I said, here's the deal. You can stay a quarterback, you can switch to wide receiver, you can switch to running back, or you can go to defensive back. Um, myself, I told him uh, flat out, I said, I think the best thing you do is go to safety. I think you can turn into a, uh, an incredible defensive back, a, a great safety, just from what I've learned over the years of, of doing it. But I said the easiest transition would probably be wide receiver. Um, so we put him there. He looked really good on Tuesday. He didn't necessarily uh, love it. Um, you know, he's having a tough time, and I get it. 
it. We're trying to get all of our players, all of our coaches to love them up and uh, keep them moving in the right direction, and, and uh, hopefully he'll do that. But I, I think he brings, uh, if he's able to make this move, he's an incredibly explosive athlete. He's very talented. He runs very, very strong. You saw on that on that uh, screenplay, he got hit by a couple guys, and he didn't go down, just kind of kept his legs turning, and he's he's a very special young man. I hope, uh, hope it works out. Well, it depends on who you're asking. Uh, um, we, we recruited him as a as a a guy that um, we thought could play safety, but I did give him the option uh, to play quarterback. He didn't buy it, but it was mainly because Coach Ash was recruiting him, and and uh, uh, I think that had to play into it. And then uh, when we brought him here, Jim thought he had the ability to play here at quarterback. I did too, and uh, told him we'd give him every opportunity to do that, and we have. Uh, one of the things that we uh, said to him when we came back after break is, you know, let's let's take a look at some guys, let's experiment and see if these other positions can work for you. And obviously, I, I've been through this so long. There's guys that welcome it with open arms. There's guys that don't. Um, and uh, uh, case in point, AJ Derby, he didn't want to hear it last spring. He didn't want to hear it this fall. I don't think you could find a happier person in this earth right now than AJ Derby. I mean, he's absolutely loving it. Uh, everything is going, and it's just a frame of mind. If if uh, if uh, Duopel wrap his arms around and hug it up and kiss it and, and make it great, I think it'll work very very well. If not, you know, um, it's not going to work well. And I'll, I'll help him go wherever he needs to go or whatever he wants to do. But um, I, I just want him to have success, and I think that's the part that he has to understand. Yeah. Well, we obviously hadn't mixed him in there as when he was playing quarterback, and then when we would take the jersey off him and put the uh, the red on him, he I said absolutely go back there and run punt returns and kick returns and stuff he's done in the past. Um, you know, if this is the route that he decides to go at the wide receiver position, we could definitely work a package for him, you know, at the quarterback spot uh, while he's playing wide receiver, and uh, he's special with the ball in his hands, and I'd love to have that in our system. Welcome to my world. Uh, no, I, 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 to be quite honest, you know, I, I love this aspect of my job. I mean, it's something I really, um, I, I, Ben Herbert and I were sitting there yesterday, and, and uh, he talked about a kid named Owen Daniels who did it at Wisconsin. Well, my first experiment with this was a guy by the name of Dallas Clark. Um, a lot of you probably know that name. With the, you know, he was a linebacker in my room for two years. And, I, and when Kirk Ferentz came in, I said, "I got to be the worst linebacker coach in the country because this kid is the first kid in every one of my drills. He's unbelievable in every fundamental drill work that we do. But I can't get him to read a guard to save my life. I can't get him to close tackle spill on on plays on defense. But I think he's really good. We should try him at tight end." First year, he's all Big Ten. Next year, he's all American. He leaves early in the draft. He's a first-round pick. He's the highest paid tight end in the history of the NFL. And um, he didn't want to hear it at first, too, but he, but he loved it, you know. Um, I can go around. Chris Maragos of the Seahawks was a wide receiver to safety. Travis Beckham was an outside linebacker to tight end. I mean, we know what players need at these positions, but sometimes they just don't want to hear it. And sometimes quarterbacks, as we all know, are very, very uh, intelligent, and they think that they know everything, and, and sometimes they're resistant to change. But I think it's coming around. We'll try it for two weeks and see where it goes. Did you say what, what's wrong with Corliss? I didn't, but it's nothing. It, it's it, uh, he basically had a day where he didn't feel well, and they wanted to make sure everything was all right. You know, just as you all know, player safety is a premium in my program, and and uh, uh, he's he's basically we've taken some steps with him to make sure everything was okay. We were, we're being overly cautious. Um, he had a procedure where he actually had um, uh, stitches, so that's why if the stitches are healed up enough, then he'll be able to go uh, on contact on Monday. I'm sorry, on Tuesday. Thank you.